are you ready for an adventure? A very special adventure. Then let's begin. Make sure you are nice and comfortable. Close your eyes and relax. Take a deep breath in and slowly breathe out. Deep breath in and slowly breathe out. One more time. Deep breath in and slowly breathe out. Now imagine that it's Christmas Eve and you are very excited. You are tucked up in your warm and cosy bed and there is a nightlight giving a lovely warm glow to the room. It's been snowing all day and it's still snowing now. And you know that when you get up in the morning, there will be a beautiful, fresh, white blanket covering all that you see. A beautiful blanket of snow. Whilst you are lying there, thinking your lovely thoughts, you hear a strange jingly sound and it's coming from outside of your window. So you listen even harder. You can't identify it at first, but you kind of think it sounds like, well, like sleigh bells. Sleigh bells softly tinkling outside your window. It can't be. Can it be? Really? Can you hear the sleigh bells? How exciting! So you get up and you look out of the window and just a few feet away from you, hovering in the air, is a very large, empty sleigh. You are flabbergasted. As you look at the sleigh, you realise that there are very large reindeers tethered to it. Lots of them. And you look to see if the first one has a red nose. But you're not sure. But you do see a lot of very happy reindeer. And it kind of looks like the first one is smiling too. You take a good, long look, wondering if what you are seeing is, is, well, is it really there? Well, yes, it is. It is really there. One of the reindeer speaks to you and your mouth drops open. Well, in shock, really. A talking reindeer. Surely that's not possible. Yes, it is possible. He tells you that he has been asked by someone special to bring you to them. They have been asked to collect you and take you to the North Pole. The North Pole. Well, we all know who lives there, don't we? You are so excited that you cannot speak. You just giggle a lot. You climb aboard the beautiful red and gold sleigh and get comfortable. There is even a big, thick, soft, 
fluffy blanket to cover you with and keep you nice and warm. And you're going to need it too, as it is very cold where you are going. The reindeer start to move, and you find that the sleigh is moving very quickly as you begin your journey over the rooftops. You're flying high, and you can see all of the chimney pots on the rooftops as you glide past them. You can see over all of the trees and tall buildings too. You look down at the town, seeing it completely covered with snow, and it looks delightful. You can see all the lights shining brightly in the windows, making the town look so peaceful, and all of the houses so warm and inviting. Have a look, see what else you can see from way up here. You fly over the snowy lands and it looks so clean and so fresh. And you fly over a magnificent snow-covered forest. The trees are all shiny and sparkling and their branches are heavy with snow. The reindeer begin to slow down and you find yourself landing in the magical snowy forest. The reindeer are now trotting on the ground, pulling the heavy sleigh behind them. You look all around you as you ride through the forest. Now and again, seeing a small animal peeking out from behind the trees and then dashing back to the safety of their woodland home. Seeing the amazing birds overhead as they fly from branch to branch. It's so beautiful here, so magical, so peaceful. The snow is still falling like tiny flower petals just floating slowly down from the sky. The forest now opens up into a big clearing. And you can see a big pathway, big enough for the reindeer to pull the sleigh on. At the end of the pathway sits a lovely old wooden house with a warm, cosy glow coming from the windows. 
and there is smoke floating out of the chimney too. Set back behind the house, you can just see a very large workshop with fairy lights glittering all over it. It's so sparkly and so bright. The reindeer bring the sleigh to a halt just outside the glittering workshop. And you see an elf has come out from the workshop to greet you. And he has the biggest smile on his face. He asks you to come inside out of the cold and offers to show you around the workshop to see how things are made. You see that there are many, many elves all working away on various things, all magical things. There are so many different toys in all colours and sizes. There are cars and dolls. There are games and puzzles. There are cuddly teddy bears and bikes and so many, many more toys. And you are so happy to be here, to be in Santa's workshop with the wonderful elves. There is a huge candy cane workshop as well, where you can even eat the furniture if you want to. But you decide not to do that, otherwise the elves would have nowhere to sit now, would they? You see a chocolate workshop too. It's the place where all the lovely sweeties are made. There is also a special chocolate that doesn't melt. Wow! Inside the chocolate workshop is a big chest filled with sweets that never go down. The big chest never gets empty. The kind elf asks you if you would like to make your very own toy. A toy that Santa can give to all the other children and it be made by you. And you can even give the toy a name. Maybe you give the toy your name. So you sit down at a workbench and design your toy. So for a little while, work on your toy. After you finish making your toy, 
you hand it to the elf, who checks it over and says how pleased he is with you for making such a grand toy. He places your beautiful toy on the shelf and asks you if you would like to explore on your own now. And you say, oh yes, please. You can now search for yourself to see what other rooms there are. So go ahead, have fun. The elf comes back now to collect you after all of your exploring and he takes you to the beautiful glowing wooden house. He knocks on the door and it is opened by Mrs. Claus, Santa's wife. She looks so lovely and so jolly and she is ever so happy to see you. She takes you into the sitting room and you sit in a big old leather armchair next to the roaring fire. And you notice that sitting opposite you is Santa. Santa! Oh my! Santa smiles at you and tells you to have some of Mrs. Claus homemade lemonade and cakes. You say thank you and then pick up the biggest piece of your favourite cake you have ever seen. And it is delicious. Santa tells you that you have been extra good this year. And for that, he gives you a special gift just for you. Something just for you. Something you have always wanted. What is it? What is the special gift Santa has just for you? Take this time to spend with Santa. To talk to him. To tell him about all the things you've done this year. About how good you are and how you love your family and your friends and how kind you've been to all of the animals. So sit with Santa for a few minutes. Just have a chat.
Now it's time for you to return home. So you say thank you to Santa and to Mrs. Claus for letting you visit with them. You step outside to see that the reindeer have brought the sleigh to you and you climb aboard. You wave goodbye as the reindeer lift the sleigh into the air. The journey back home is at lightning speed. You whiz over the clearing and over the magical forest. You whiz over the rooftops, seeing the chimney pots again and the smoke from the fires drifting up into the sky. And before you know it, you are outside your bedroom window again. You climb back in through your bedroom window and turn to say thank you to the reindeer for this lovely surprise. You say goodbye and wave them off. And you watch as the sleigh glides through the sky and off into the distance and you can no longer see it. It's still snowing outside and your room is all warm and cosy. You close your window and climb back into bed. As you close your eyes, you wonder to yourself, did that really happen? Did I really just meet Santa? Well, yes, you did just meet Santa. So you smile happily to yourself, giving a big sigh of contentment. And slowly, but surely, you drift off to sleep. Now see yourself in your room. And you notice, for the first time, a snow globe on your shelf. Seems a bit odd, as you've never noticed this snow globe before. But the snow globe is so beautiful, and it seems to be glowing, and it's lighting up your whole room. And you feel drawn to it, almost as if it's calling to you. So you go over and you pick up the snow globe and it really is beautiful. Can you feel it in your hands? Can you feel its energy? You are absolutely mesmerized by its beauty. You decide to shake it and whoosh! Suddenly, you find yourself standing on a vast plain of ice. Just ice and snow. The snow globe must have somehow transported you to another land. And you feel very happy and safe here though and you are wrapped up nice and cosy and you are feeling so very peaceful and so very calm. Look around you. Is there anything else you can see on this vast plain of ice and snow? In the distance, you see a huge shape walking towards you. Can you see it? The shape gets closer and closer, bigger and bigger. And it looks a 
bit like a polar bear. It is. It's a polar bear. And this polar bear is huge. He is big and fairy, but he has a lovely kind face. The polar bear introduces himself to you. Yes, he can talk. He says his name is Eric and he is a magical polar bear from Winter Wonderland. And he says he would like to take you somewhere special as you seem a little bit lonely. He wants to take you to where he lives. Winter Wonderland. Of course you agree. After all, you never want to miss out on an adventure. You notice there is a round hole in the ice leading to the ocean under the surface. Eric the polar bear puts you on his back and dives under the water and you are amazed that you are able to breathe perfectly well under the water and you can see just as well just as well as you can see on land crystal clear the water is warm just like a nice bath this is quite remarkable you look at Eric and notice he is smirking at you kind of grinning. Under the water is completely the opposite of the land. It is so colourful. The fish are so vibrant and this vast ocean is filled with life and colour. Can you see it? Can you see all the lovely fish? all the lovely colours. Take a short while to look around the underwater paradise with Eric the polar bear. Maybe you can ask Eric any questions that you may have. You come back up to land and still on Eric's very white shoulders. Wow, what a journey that was. 
you look up and you notice a wooden sign reading, Welcome to Winter Wonderland, the place where dreams come true. Well, that is a nice welcome. You instantly feel at home here and you have a really good feeling about this place. This place is absolutely amazing. It is so beautiful. And you look around. The polar bears all have their own log cabins. Yes, log cabins. And you see a giraffe driving a bus with his head popping out of the roof as his neck is so long. A giraffe with his head popping out of the roof. Oh my. You can see an elephant dressed in a suit reading a book. An elephant reading a book. No wonder they never forget anything. Wow, this really is a wonderful wonderland. Take a look around and see what else you can see. See what you can feel. See what you can hear. And just have fun. Eric the polar bear tells you he wants you to meet someone special in the beautiful ice palace. 
the emperor of the whole kingdom. So you make your way and you can see an incredible looking palace in the distance. You can see it sparkling in the sunshine and it almost looks like it's made from the stars and from diamonds. It shines so brightly. And as you reach the entrance of this amazing palace, you notice it's protected by a family of polar bears. And they all seem to know Eric and they shake his hand and say hello. It kind of looks like Eric is some kind of boss here. Eric introduces you to his friends and his family and you shake all of their big fairy hands and your hand kind of disappears into theirs. You walk through the amazing ice doors into the palace and you are greeted by a little penguin wearing a crown and a huge grin on his face. Eric gets down on his knees in respect but the little penguin tells him there is no need. This is the Emperor Penguin, the ruler of the whole of Winter Wonderland. You take a walk with the Emperor or oh, really more of a waddle because he can't walk very well and he tells you all about his special kingdom he tells you how all of the animals here live in perfect peace and harmony lions just walk past and smile rather than eating you because they don't really want to there is no money here either. If people want things from the shops, instead what they do is they swap things or they do kind deeds for each other. Wow, this certainly is a wonderland. So perfect. So now you're going to spend just a few minutes exploring this magnificent ice palace and you're going to explore it with the Emperor Penguin. So take a good look around and see what you can see. See if you can bring back any messages or any wisdom. Ask the Emperor Penguin any questions that you may want answering just have a chat.
just before you have to leave this wonderful kingdom, the Emperor Penguin tells you he has the power to grant wishes, but only wishes that are for good. And he allows you one special wish before you leave, a winter wonderland wish. So have a think about what you would like to wish for and make sure it is for something good. Now it's time to come back home and the Emperor Penguin pulls out a snow globe and tells you to hold it tightly and it will transport you straight back home again. You thank the Emperor Penguin for his hospitality and Eric of course. You give Eric a big hug and he tells you that you can come back here any time you want. All you have to do is hold out the snow globe in your room and call his name in your mind and he will come and get you. You feel so blessed. So you say goodbye and you take hold of the snow globe from the Emperor Penguin's hand and whoosh! You are back home again. You feel so happy now, so at peace and so calm. And you feel so positive that kindness and goodness can really work in our world too. Each good deed that you do sends out a ripple of kindness across the world. Now imagine yourself surrounded by a beautiful white light. A light so bright and so pure. A light of protection and peace. Breathe in this beautiful white light and feel the light as it enters your whole body filling you up completely making you feel warm and very very safe now imagine yourself in an old wooden log cabin in the middle of a beautiful snowy forest and you are sitting in front of a lovely warm and crackling fire all nice and cosy you hear a tap on the window and you get up to see who it is you walk over and open the door and what you see is not a person at all it's a toy robot a toy robot the size of a small toddler and what's more it's a talking robot wow a talking robot he looks a bit scared though and you tell him not to be afraid. You are his friend. And if he needs help, you will be very happy to help him. He tells you his name is Rupert. And that he is lost. He doesn't know where he is. He tells you he lives in Fairyland. He tells you he was out walking and having an adventure. And he has somehow gotten lost and now doesn't know where he is. 
You tell him not to worry. You will help him find his way back to Fairyland. So you leave the cabin and you both walk around for a little while, searching, trying to find Fairyland, looking everywhere. As you walk around, Rupert tells you about his friends and the fairy Snow Queen. He tells you that there are other toys who are alive too. He tells you that the fairy Snow Queen waves her magic wand and sprinkles gold and stardust on them all and they all come to life. The Fairy Snow Queen gives life to all of the toys in the kingdom. There is snow everywhere. And you laugh out loud when suddenly you are hit with a snowball. Rupert threw a snowball at you and you fall over. You jump up and throw one back at Rupert. He laughs too. So for a little while, play at snowball fighting with Rupert and just have some fun. Although he is having lots of fun, Rupert says he has to get back now, as his friends and the fairy Snow Queen, well, they'll be worried because they don't know where he is. So you and Rupert start to walk to find Fairyland and the Snow Queen's palace. Eventually, Rupert recognises a snowy path. And on this path are his good friends, Sophia and Norman. 
and they have been looking everywhere for Rupert. Rupert is ecstatic and shouts with joy. They both rush to meet him and give him great big hugs. Sophia is a little cuddly teddy bear with a pink bow in her hair. And Norman is a little yellow car with headlights for eyes. You say hello to them and they give you great big smiles back. Sophia says that the way to Fairyland is up ahead. Sophia starts to walk and you all follow. Rupert then realises that when you get to the snowy fairyland, you won't be able to see it, as only fairies and toys can see fairyland. Then he notices in the distance, just a little further back, is the Snow Queen herself. Oh wow! She is very beautiful and she has on the most sparkliest dress you have ever seen. She is floating in the air with her magic wand and with a magnificent golden crown on her head with lots and lots of jewels on it. She's all shiny and sparkly. The fairy Snow Queen smiles her beautiful smile at you. And you go all shy. You have never seen anyone as beautiful as her. The Snow Queen gives Rupert a big hug because he is scared and he got lost again. Rupert is always getting lost when he sneaks out to have a look at the human world. The Fairy Snow Queen tells you that no human has ever been allowed to enter her kingdom before. But because you have been so kind, she will make the fairyland visible to you. The Snow Queen waves her wand and the kingdom suddenly becomes visible. And you are absolutely flabbergasted by the sight that you can see. The whole of the kingdom is covered with gold and stardust and it floats in the air like glitter, dancing in the light, making everything sparkle and shine. And only toys and fairies can live here and they live in peace and harmony and they love one another. Nobody ever quarrels. The Fairy Snow Queen says that you can go for a walk around Fairyland with her, Rupert, Sophia and Norman. She says that you can meet some more of the other toys if you want to. Do you want to? Maybe you will recognise some toys from back home. So for a few minutes, have a wander around Fairyland. Maybe you can visit the Snow Queen's palace as well. So take a little while to look around and see what you can see. See who you meet and just have a really, really good time.
Now it's time to return to your home. But before you do, the Fairy Snow Queen has a special gift for you. She hands you a beautiful golden key that sparkles with fairy dust. This special key from the Snow Queen will allow you to enter Fairyland any time you want. And when you take the key out of your pocket, Fairyland becomes visible. But you must never tell anyone, because if you do, the key will not work. You say your goodbyes to Rupert, Norman and Sophia, and you thank the Fairy Queen for letting you visit her beautiful home. And she smiles at you. The Fairy Snow Queen now sprinkles golden stardust all over your head. And magically, you are back at the cabin in the forest. Oh, you feel so happy. And you feel as if you have made a lot of new friends today. And you have... Now imagine that you are in your bedroom and you are just about to get ready for bed. Imagine putting on your pyjamas. Notice how clean and fresh they smell. And as you stand there deciding whether or not to get into bed, you hear a strange noise coming from your wardrobe. It sounds kind of like well, like a shuffling sound, or maybe a funny bumping sound. You can also hear the gentle sound of the wind. How strange. You wonder what this is. So with a lot of courage, you open the wardrobe door to investigate. And you wonder just what it is you'll find. To your amazement, you see a snowman sitting inside amongst your clothes. And to your further astonishment, you see that he's doing a crossword puzzle. You open your eyes very wide. You can't quite believe what you are seeing. The snowman has little flurries of snow all around him. And there is even some snow on your clothes too. The snowman has a large, brightly coloured scarf around his neck and an enormous carrot for a nose. He has a very large top hat on his head with a big yellow flower stuck in it. He gives you a big grin and he tells you that his name is Brian. But rather bizarrely, he already knows your name. He asks you if you want to go on an adventure with him, to which you say, oh yes, please. To your utter amazement, he opens the back of the wardrobe and you see before you an amazing snowy wonderland. Wow. You step through the back of your wardrobe with Brian into the snowy winter wonderland. Brian then hands you a really smart leather jacket and it has big badges all over it. He says, Here, you better put this on. It can get very cold where we are going. He then puts one on himself. But his jacket isn't as clean and nice as yours. Well, it's a bit scruffy really. But Brian doesn't seem to mind. He then walks with you a little way, where you see a very large and very shiny motorcycle. And it's bright pink. Bright pink! Brian tells you that pink is his favourite colour.
As you look at Brian's bright pink motorcycle, you can see his name on the side of the bike. And it's written in a very vivid purple colour. And it says, Brian the Snowman. And you think to yourself, oh, what a glorious bike this is. And Brian is ever so proud of it. Brian climbs on his motorcycle and he tells you to jump on behind him and hold on tight. He is taking you to the land of the snowman. Brian turns the key in the ignition and suddenly the motorcycle roars into life. And just as quickly, the motorcycle speeds off so fast that all you can do is hang on for dear life. Wow, Brian is a fast driver. As you both tear off into the distance, you realise that you are already in Snowman Land. And it's a very beautiful place. And there are long slim icicles hanging from the trees that you pass. And everywhere is covered with snow. Glorious white snow. You can see lovely little houses. Well, igloos really. But they're all decorated with Christmas lights. And there are lots and lots of coloured lights everywhere. And there are Christmas trees on every single corner of all of the roads. The igloos all have smoke drifting out of their chimneys that sit on top of them. And you wonder to yourself, maybe they will all melt, you know, with the fire. The fire that's burning inside of them. Oh, you do hope not. You can see many other snowmen getting on with their lives. Some of them are driving cars. Some of them are doing their Christmas shopping. And some of them are even playing guitars and old tin drums on street corners. And they're busking for loose change. But they really are having lots of fun. Brian tells you that you're going on a little trip on the bikes. But first, you have to pick up a couple of his friends, because they would like to come too. So you pull up the bike outside a very pretty little igloo. Brian beeps his horn, and the front door opens, and out pops a very large white yeti. It's a yeti. A big yeti. She gives a big grin and she tells you her name is Betty. Betty the Yeti. Betty has a motorcycle too. Hers is a great big black monster of a bike. And Betty also has a boyfriend. Her boyfriend is a penguin called Jeff. Jeff is a very tiny penguin and he sits in a rucksack that Betty carries on her huge back and he looks ever so comfy and warm on Betty's back. You think that maybe Jeff is a bit hungry because he rummages around in the rucksack and pulls out a big sandwich and begins to eat it. How funny! When you are all sitting comfortably the two motorcycles roar off together skidding in the snow and you think that this is great fun and you laugh out loud and you are really enjoying this. As you go on your travels with Brian, Betty and Jeff, you meet their best friend Herbie. Herbie the Husky. Herbie is a biker too. He wears black shiny sunglasses, you know the ones, the ones that wrap around your head. Brian the Snowman really does have some rather colourful friends. You all decide to take a ride over the frozen lake. Brian says it will be great fun. 
You all roar around, slipping and sliding all over the place. And you pass by a very big tree, all covered with snow and icicles. Brian then sees his friend, Snotty the Snowflake, and he's hanging from one of the branches, and he shouts a big hello to him. Snotty the Snowflake grins back, wipes his runny nose, and shouts hello. So for a little while, spend some time with Brian the Snowman, Betty the Yeti, Jeff the Penguin, and Herbie the Husky. You can go anywhere you want with them. Where would you like to go most of all? Go there. Enjoy your ride. Now it's time for you to return, but not to your home, but to Brian's home. Brian lives in a huge igloo, but he lives there all by himself, and sometimes he tells you he gets very lonely. Brian asks you if you would like a sleepover at his igloo, so that he doesn't have to be alone, and you say a great big yes please. Brian's igloo is very cosy and warm and you see he has a big fire in the grate and it doesn't melt his igloo. Thank goodness for that. Brian invites you to take a look around his huge igloo with all of its many rooms. He says that you can go into any room you like and you can see what's there. So spend a little while doing just that. Have a good look around. See what Brian has. See if he has anything like you have in your home.
Now that you have finished looking at all of Brian's lovely cosy rooms, he takes you into his living room. And you see that he has a massive sofa that everyone can sit down on together. And there is lovely, relaxing music playing in the background. And it makes you feel all warm and safe. It's so nice here in Brian's living room. You sit down and you look around. And you notice as you look around that there are photographs all over Brian's walls. There are photos of his mum and his dad. There are photos of all of his brothers and his sisters. There is even a graduation picture of Brian on the wall looking very proud of himself in his smart cap and gown. This has been one very busy day for you and you kind of feel a bit sleepy now. But you can also hear the sound of snoring. And you look around and you see that everyone else has fallen asleep on the massive big sofa. Brian the snowman is asleep. So is Betty the Yeti. And Jeff the penguin is asleep too. But the one who is making the loudest snores is Herbie the Husky. And Herbie is lying on his back with his legs sticking straight up in the air and he's snoring happily away. You also feel a bit sleepy too. This music is so very relaxing. And your eyes are feeling so heavy now. So very, very heavy. And you feel so peaceful. So calm. And so very, very relaxed. Maybe you can just rest a bit yourself. Maybe you can just close your weary eyes and drift off into a lovely, peaceful sleep. After all, you have had a very busy day. <laughs>